Hey guys, hope you're all good today. Previously, we saw the concept of joins, simple SQL joins, which we'll be using in the Power Center designer now. So, this video will discuss the inner join. Chances are that you've already written an SQL statement that uses an SQL inner join. It is the most common type of SQL join. SQL inner joins return all rows from multiple tables where the join condition is met. The syntax for the inner join is that select columns from table 1 in a join table 2 on table 1 equal to column and table 2 equal to column. The inner join returns all the values of the intersecting table part. So let's take a look at an example of this. Let's go to SQL assistant we will connect to the database source HR database and take a look at the data in the employees and departments table which we'll be using in our example so connect to the test one ODBC connection using the username HR and the password HR as well Okay, so select steric from employees and let's write another SQL statement for select steric from departments. So let's see what we get when we execute the first statement. Okay, we get 107 rows and if we sort them by the department ID we can see the okay, job ID summary. We have lots of columns here, but we'll sort it by department ID. And we can see that we have values for null department ID 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, 100, 110. Now let's execute the second statement for departments table. Sorry, it's departments. Yeah, let's execute it. And here you can see that we have way more department IDs than we had in the employees table but there is no value for the null department ID we have 200 272 and 220 etc but none for the null so what will happen if we execute an inner join for this of this of this table based on department ID so let's like that write that select steric from departments from employees let's give it an alias as e Inner join departments with the departments with alias D on E dot department ID equal to D dot department ID. Okay, let's execute this and see what we get. Let's close this window and maximize this. So yeah, you can see here that there are no rows for null department ID or the 270 or 210 other department IDs which were not in the employees, employees table. So we know that now we get only the intersecting values of both the tables by doing the inner join. So let's implement this in the Power Center Designer. But firstly, we need to create a target table for our mappings which will be a replica of the employees table but it would have one extra column named the department name. So let's connect to the repository uh, using the password uh, username target and the password target as well. Expand this and get generate the SQL for the create statement of employees table. At the end add another table another column called department name and give it the type varkar uh, 50 and now execute this statement and name it as employees underscore join okay execute this and yeah there you go now let's move over to the power center designer to create our mapping. Uh, 
Okay, now connect to the repository using the name administrator and password oracle. Yeah, open the folder training folder and let's create a new mapping and name it create it create yeah and uh, name it as m underscore employees underscore employees underscore join click ok now we need to import a new target as we have already have the source employees over here and departments also so let's drag and drop them over here arrange them all now let's import the target table from database connect using target and target connect expand this and over here you'll see the new table that we created employees underscore join so select that okay it's here now drag and drop this table over here as well now we need to create a joiner transformation so the joiner transformation will be this one click it over here now let's we need to bring in all the columns from employees table and only two columns from the department table which are for of our use which is department name and department id bring them in, in the join transformation okay <clears throat> now double click on the join transformation to edit its properties rename it as jnr underscore employees let's go with the ports you can see that there are io ports and then there's another m port in the conditions let's add a new condition over here you can see that it displays all the columns for employees table and for the departments table and then there's the master table over here you can see that department table has been selected as master table by default but if we click on any of the columns of the employees table automatically all the columns get selected as master but generally the rule is that we select the smaller column table with less number of rows as the master table so let the department id department table be the master table now in the properties tab we'll select the normal join which is the inner join the rest of the joins we'll discuss later so let's keep it as normal join and in the conditions we've specified that we're joining them on department ids okay click apply okay and now let's auto link these right click and perform an auto link select employees join click ok and there you go you can see that all the columns have been populated of the target table arrange these now we're sending data from both the tables joining them over here and then sending it to the target table save your work and let's move over to the sessions and create a session and workflow for it so let's open the workflow manager over here we'll create a new workflow and name it as wf underscore employees underscore employees underscore join create a new session for the mapping that we just created the join mapping now let's connect the start of the workflow to the session and now we need to edit the properties of the session so let's double click on it rename it first and remove the m underscore for naming convention purposes and then select the fail if parent task fails in the properties tab let's select the right backward compatibility session log files and if you scroll down 
we need to set the session and target uh, database connections so for the source connection we'll select HRS source and for the target connection we'll select the target database next let's go to the config object over here scroll down to set the number of session logs that we need to save let's set it as 5 and stop on errors as 1 okay in the mapping tab for both the sources we need to give in the connection as the variable connection connection variable dollar source nothing else to be set over here for the second source given the connection variable is dollar source as well okay no other option to be selected here for the target given the connection value as connection variable dollar target okay select the normal load type truncate table option as well yeah click apply okay and save your work now or let's first validate your work okay it's valid now save it and let's run the workflow okay the workflow is running here you can see that it succeeded successfully and 27 and 107 rows 106 rows were written to the target let's go to the session log and see what happened if you scroll down we can see that yeah 106 rows were written to the target 107 were taken from employees table 27 were taken from the department's table so let's go to target database and see what we have in the table the target table so select direct from employees underscore join here you can see that all the data for the joining tables intersecting data for both the tables is over here and the data that did not exist in either of the table was omitted so this was the basic concept and an example of the joiner transformation using the inner join so in the following lectures we'll be looking at a few more examples of the joins so stay with us thank you so much and bye bye